Bro, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 is looking way crazier than anyone expected, and honestly, this is low-key one of the biggest surprises from Qualcomm this year, because this is not the elite flagship chip, but the performance? Man, it's basically sitting right behind the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, like, hey big bro, I'm right here too. So here's what's wild. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 is only 14% slower than the Elite Gen 5. We just got the first Antutu benchmark numbers, and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 hit 3.56 million points. For a non-flagship chip, that is insane. If the Elite Gen 5 hits around 4 million, that means we're talking just a 14% difference. That's like paying mid-range price but getting almost flagship power. It's like buying a cheaper sports car and it still smokes every car in the neighborhood. And here's the crazy part. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 is built on the same three nanometer process as the Elite, same N3P lithography, same modern tech. It's basically the Elite's younger brother who eats the same food, trains in the same gym, but just runs at slightly lower speeds. Qualcomm didn't downgrade the architecture much. It still has the same two plus six CPU setup. The main difference? The clocks are lower, 3.80 GHz for performance cores and 3.32 GHz for efficiency cores. But even with lower clocks, it's still putting up numbers that almost match its big brother. That's why people are going crazy right now. First phone to use it, the OnePlus Ace 6T. Android 16, 16 GB RAM, UFS 4.1. Bro, this thing is going to fly. And trust me, if OnePlus starts with this chip, other brands are going to follow fast. Everyone wants performance, but nobody wants to spend what Qualcomm is charging for the Elite. This chip is the perfect option for brands who don't want to pay crazy money for the Elite, now have something super close to it. Like imagine, you skip the super ultra mega flagship chip, but your phone still performs like a flagship. That's huge for mid-range and upper mid-range phones in 2025. Something else that's interesting, early rumors actually suggested the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 would score lower than this, but the real retail chip scored higher. So if it's already beating early expectations, just imagine what it's going to do with updates and better optimization. This chip might even push past 3.6 million as phones get tuned. And now, let's talk about heat. This might be the biggest W for the non-flagship chip. The Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 has been rumored to have overheating issues. Not shocking, it's a monster chip running at max settings all the time. But the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5? Lower clocks, same 3 nanometer tech, more balanced design? This might actually be the better chip for long gaming sessions, smoother performance, and overall cooler temps. Imagine this, the cheaper chip doesn't overheat, performs almost as fast, and gives you better stability. If that happens, the Elite might start feeling like overkill for a lot of people. So what does all this mean? It means Qualcomm isn't playing. This is one of the biggest jumps we've seen in their non-flagship lineup in years. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 isn't just good enough. It's competitive, it's powerful, and it might end up being the chip that makes mid-range phones feel like full flagships. And honestly, this might be the chip most people should buy instead of the Elite. We still need to see more tests, gaming, thermals, real-world usage, battery drain, all that stuff. But right now, this thing looks like a beast. And with November 26th getting closer, bro, the hype is real. I'll keep breaking it down as more leaks drop.